have the first 3D printer launch of 2025 and it's a Creality Multicolor Bed Slinger. We've been waiting for that for a while and now it's finally here. Nobody knows if it got leaked and then eventually they release it on the website or if they planned that launch and just quietly swept it in, which I don't believe it was. Regardless of that, I'm very excited. I'm, I've been always a fan of Creality. I think Creality is very good making the technology more accessible. So they did that with the Enders, they did that with the CR10s and now I think they're take on the multicolor system is how to properly optimize it, put it to Creality standards because Creality does have a very good standard, but also make it a little bit more accessible than it would be on other brands, right? We already have any cubic already has a multicolor system with a bad slinger, Bamboo obviously, which was the one that introduced it, and Creality already has the K2 series, which kind of goes uh, hand to hand with the X1 and the P1 series. But now they're bringing the Creality High, which is a direct competitor of the A1 series, which is ex exciting to see as well. The more this market gets competitive, the trend is for those prices to go down. Uh, we will have the community using, there will be new features, new way of making the multicolor. I think at the end of the day, what we want is for this category of products to become even more efficiency, even faster and even cheaper. All right, so let's react to the video first and then let's read the specs that we have on the website. All right, so a very cool garage. I wish I was this guy and he plays the guitar too. Nice. Ready for a new adventure? All metal body, which is similar to what we have on the current Enders as well. This feels like it's a different spool from the current Creality filaments. If anybody has used this spool already, you can drop a comment down below. I haven't used this filament yet. Uh, this spool, probably the filament is the same. Uh, so yeah, CFS, uh, I wonder but I believe it is if it's the same width and depth as we have at the AMS because then all the manufacturers that we are able to use in the AMS will be able to use in the CFS. I think they wouldn't go on the other direction because everybody's just trying to standardize pools. So I think they wouldn't try to create a different dimension in here. You wouldn't be a good alternative, I think. Uh, 3.2 inches touchscreen, auto bed leveling, obviously it needs to have these days. Color play. What is happening here? Four times the CF4 for 16 colors. It does take a while, but it does allow you to make a lot of amazing projects. So this is a cool feature as well. Nice. Next generation extruder. This is something that I was looking at the images and I was wondering. It's obviously not the same extruder as the K1 and I believe it's not the same as the K2 as well. And it's not the same as well as the Ender. It's funny that Creality, every time they go in, they kind of like redesign the whole thing. It can't be that it's a different, it's the same extruder from the inside and then from the outside, they only did a different shell. It could be, uh, but I'm not sure yet. And I haven't seen anybody talking about it. So if you have more information about it, please also drop a comment down below so we can understand this product a little bit better. So next gen extruder. Look, this is a completely different extruder. Let me check the K2 one real quick. Yep, it's a different extruder from what we have in the K2. So I wonder if it's a different extruder in the inside or only on the outside. So mind blowing 500 millimeters a second, also very fast speed, but kind of standard these days as well. But this is what we were expecting for Creality. Apparently they redesigned their slicer. I can't see much, that, but I kind of look, I kind of like this AI with the features on the top. It feels like a CAD software, the colors in here. Let's see how that will be in reality. Nice. The kid loved it. Camera for video monitoring. Cool as well. And it's nice because it allows you to see what, what's going on on your printer. But that side camera that we have both on the A1 and now it feels like it's kind of like the same structure on the Creality High. It's not the best for time lapses because it, it moves too much uh, as it's on the bed and it's a bed slinger. So you don't have like that really cool time lapse off of this camera. It's more like a functional camera that you can use to see uh, whether your printing is going successfully or not. Color the world around you. So there are the bird rock band. And the bird participates in the rock band. Nice. 
Nice. I kind of like the setup. I like the how it looks with the CFSs on the stack on top of each other. I kind of like this whole thing right here. All right, so now let's move forward and look at the specs. Intelligent CFS, four times, same, same as we have on the P1S as a, on the original AMS from Creality, with, from Creality, sorry, from Bamboo, which does not connect to the A1 series. And here we have a bad slinger with the possibility of doing 16 colors. This is new. Whether we would like that or not, it's a different thing because we do know that changing colors does take quite a bit. So to print something with 16 colors takes a while. We, that, we did that only once in STL Flix and it took a very long time, but it was a nice experiment. It does allow you to make some really cool projects if you're not worried about time or the, 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 the amount of money you're spending on all of that. So it's a new feature that we haven't seen before. Whether it would be used or not, I'm not sure. A hands-off calibration. It needs to be automatic filament reading, leveling, and PA tuning. Easy to start, 95% pre-assemble. Also very standard these days, but still very well welcomed because it used to be such a hassle to set up printers in the previous days. Thoughtful boot up guide, uh, that onboarding when you first turn on the printer, that's very nice to have as well. Feature pack extruder, the extruder that I'm not sure whether it's a completely new extruder or the same from the K2, but with a different shell. It does have that fan on the side that we've seen before. We've seen on the K1, and I believe the K2 does have the fan on the side as well. But this in the front, well, in the A1 series, we have a visual indicator here of the, the extruder kind of like spinning around. And I think they put that up there because the majority of the A1 users, well, at least the intended A1 users are new to 3D printing. Uh, so it's cool for them to visually uh, have a representation that it is extruding. Uh, obviously, a lot of people that bought A1s were people that already had 3D printers, but they put that visual cue there. I wonder if Creality is doing the same in here or if it's a different fan. I don't know. All metal body, it does feel quite a bit as the body that we have on the current Enders. Have the same accessory on the side to like, not the same obviously, but it does have the same technique of putting the purge to the side. It's more functional this version that we have on the A1 than the one that we have on the K1 and the P1S. Uh, there's a lot of times in the X1 and the P1 series that the poop goes back into the build plate. And in this one that we have on the A1, that does not happen. I wonder uh, what's the reality in the Creality you know, on the K2 and now the Creality High. I haven't used any of these printers to know. But this feature here tends to be more efficient on the A1, when we're talking about the bamboo uh, catalog, than it is on the P1S and the X1. All right, CFS, the same as we have on the K2, so nothing really new in here. Uh, it can pair up to be up to 16 colors, coloring the world around you, some nice models. None of them are STL flicks. Creality, come on, help me out here, man. Hands-off experience, all the best while hands-off. You can probably send the prints directly from your smartphone app or from your computer uh, using Creality Cloud. Uh, so nothing really new here, but still a very needed feature these days. Uh, RFID, which we have seen before. And when we're talking about multicolor, RFID is especially important because there is an amount of filament that you need to purge when you are switching from one color to the other, right? Uh, and when we have the RFID enabled, uh, it already knows the purge that you need between one and the other. And obviously there are ways to optimize it. We've made a very cool video on how to optimize color changes uh, here in this channel that you can you can check. Perhaps we can put it in the description below. And, and I think we will be able to have something similar within the Creality environment, but I'm not sure yet. And when we do, I'll make a video explaining how to do on the Creality environment as well. And then we have here, we don't have a screw. We have that rail, which is very cool. And it's much better as well. The sensor, how many times it reads the, the bed to understand and level it. Uh, nothing very different from what we've seen before. A 1000 watts AC heat bed that can reach 60 degrees Celsius in 30 seconds or 100 degrees Celsius in 90 seconds. That's, f that's fast. I wonder what's the power on the A1 series, let me take a look. All right, so it does not say in the A1 heat bed what's the power of it. This is not something that bothers me too much these days. No, I'm not sure. You can put in the comment down below if it's a new feature that they're introducing now to Creality High or if it's something that it's the standard already. Easy start, smooth filament in and out by touch control. That's cool as well. Distinct sounds to keep you informed. The built-in buzzer will give you off corresponding sounds when the print task is finished or paused unexpectedly. Oh, that's kind of cool as well. The A1 series or the X1 or the P1s, they let you know with a sound cue 
that it paused unexpectedly. I'm not sure. I don't think it does that. When the printers finish, they've been there since the, <laughs> since the Stone Ages. Printers do need constant attention. They print faster when you look at them. Just kidding. That's not true. Uh, easy from assembly to first print. Assembly gets even easier. Photo weight 32, uh, 3.2 inch touchscreen. Uh, helpful boot up guide. Cool as well. Very cool. Very important, especially for new users. The boot up guide on the A1 is really cool. I wonder if Reality was able to make the same here. I'm pretty sure they did. And I think this is very cool, especially for the new users coming in. Camera with privacy cap. This is a very interesting feature. I wonder why they put it in here. Uh, we know that there was that story of the A1s being hacked and started by themselves. I wonder if the privacy cap is for you to keep it uh, kept. Uh, so if you get hacked, nobody's going to look at your camera recording the print bed with nothing in behind. Still, why would you like that, right? So privacy cap, weird feature, but it's there. Some people might like it. A much quieter experience. The operating noise has been tempered by the dynamically balanced fans the frictionless linear rail and the smooth linear rods so you get more tranquility. That's nice. I wonder if they have like kind of like that noise cancellation that Bamboo makes uh, in their initial setup guide uh, to reduce the, the vibrations by like analyzing how the table is vibrating, which in the Bamboos is very impressive if you ever did that, how much they're able to reduce the noise when they do that. As steady as it is stylish. I think it's stylish. I like the overall style of it. I People criticize me because whenever I'm talking about a printer, I say, yeah, it does look good as well. For me, it's important that printers look good because I want I want my printers to be exposed. I don't want them to be shoved away in a corner. And in the past, we needed to do that. Features an all-metal body with unibody parts die cast out of aluminum alloy. It looks stylish and ensures minimal shaking. The printer also gets a linear rail on the x-axis and two linear rods on the y-axis. The rigid structure and smooth motion will elevate the print quality considerably. Yeah, this uh, they're not putting anything new in here in terms of structure, right? It, it's very similar for what we have in the current enders as well. Uh, active input shaping. I think this is the sensor that they offsets the vibration. Reality High owns a proprietary algorithm that can analyze the amplitude of vibrations at different print speeds and generate opposite signals to cancel out the vibrations actively. So you get faster prints, less ringing and smoother surfaces. Nice. It's interesting. It, it's, I think it's close to what we've seen in the bamboos already, but it's still a very important feature for modern name printers. Clean support for removal for intricate models. This is interesting. CFS makes post-processing much easier by creating the support structures in a different material that can be snapped away or even water soluble. The resulting 3D model will not show any support marks. Any multicolor system that you have, if you have a water soluble filament that can print in the same temperature as the PLA, you're going to be able to do that. Because the only restriction that you have to use multi-materials well, obviously, you have retraction settings, you have all the settings that are somehow related to the filament. But when you have a filament that is able to be printed with specs that are similar to the PLA, you can put that filament as your part material, right? And it's going to make it easier for you to remove the supports. We're actually studying right now how to use PET-G supports together with PLA to create pretty much the same effect because they don't blend together. And then when you have water soluble, it's the same. About the support marks, it's not going to show like that white damaged surface that you have with the PLA, but it's still going to show the quality of the surface behind any supports is still going to be a little bit less precise. So the layers are not going to be well that well laid as if you are just printing normally, right? Because it is on a position that is a little bit more complex. So it's not going to show the damage of the removal of the supports. That surface underneath it is not going to be as smooth as the rest. Obviously, your support settings can increase that a lot, but in general, that's what it is. Advanced extruder, metal extruder gears, ultra wear resistant and long lasting, automated filament cutter, it needs to have if you want to automatically change the colors. Bed leveling sensors. I can barely see it here. Integrated nozzle design, clog free and quick swap. It is durable and easily swappable. I think you can swap the whole thing, but how can you swap the whole thing? It's not clear for me at the moment. Titanium alloy, heat break blocking, heat creep, copper alloy, nozzle body heating up quickly. It seems like the heat block is actually a, a aluminum alloy that it does the heat all the way here. I'm not sure whether this is 
totally new or not no, i don't think it this is the, this is a first to be honest and how to remove for me is still not clear the a1 series has a very smart way to remove the nozzle i haven't seen how to remove here perhaps we'll see it in the, in the next days 500 millimeters a second speed boosted by foc step servo motors the x and y axis for reality high are driven by step servo motors with foc algorithms minimal step loss and layer shift it enables quiet and smooth up motion even at mind-blowing print speeds 500 millimeters a second the 500 millimeters the second thing is when a car manufacturer is trying to sell you a car and they talk about the turbo engine and how efficient it is you're not going to print at 500 millimeters a second but the fact that it can reach 500 millimeters a second already opens up the possibility for you to print much faster than it would 500 millimeters a second is the the kind of like the new standard that we have um in this new generation of printers and 1000 12,000 millimeters a square second max acceleration so also I think nothing too different here. Let me see. It's a little bit faster. The acceleration, it's 2000, it's 20% faster than the A1 series. Whether this is going to be noticeable on your print, on the time of your print, I'm not sure it will be noticeable. It can accelerate faster, so it means that you can, your standard, which is not going to be this uh, setting, can be slightly faster too. Advanced software, seamless workflow, Creality OS profoundly evolved. The latest Creality OS will unlock the full power of your 3D printer. It features smart, multi filament management and allows for fine-tuning in expert mode with root access fluid web UI also supported for your convenience uh, we still saw that on the video as well all new UI refreshing slicing experience I wonder if it's it's there already for us to download uh, I'll take a look at that uh, the ready-to-go presets easily match your specific nozzle diameter and filament meanwhile it includes many new functions to boost work efficiency and print quality and then we have the Creality cloud which is also not new for me they are a little bit behind maker lab uh in that sense but it's still it, it got a lot better that's not my go-to place and then rfid filament creality rfid filament is the perfect match with cfs they include an rfid chip carries filament type color and other info that can be read as i was mentioning before by the cfs therefore it enables intelligent filament management which is key to multicolor tasks and this pool i haven't seen before i like this pool so it's fdm xyz e motor uh the build volume is slightly bigger than what we have in the a1 uh the a1 is 256 by 256 by 256 and here we have 260 by 260 by 300 and then the rest there's nothing here that really sparks my attention so this is the new creality high combo let me know in the comments below if you're excited about this printer or not i'm pretty sure that whenever we got our hands in this I'm going to be making a video not only about this, but also how to optimize the multicolor settings in this printer as well. All right, so thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to improve in 3D printing, 3D modeling, entrepreneurship, you can click in the link below, go to STL Academy, where we have courses dedicated for pretty much all your needs in 3D printing. And also, don't forget to subscribe to STL Flix, where you will have the incredible platform, the best platform for STLs in the world, where not a file repository we're much more than that we are a creative studio constantly creating new and cool models that you are going to be able to print easily with instructions in your own house and achieve the best results out of your printer all right thank you very much for watching stick with us and i'll see you in the next one